Your time now 624. Would you eat in a restaurant that received a low score on a health inspection test? Probably not. We all want our food prepared in the safest environment. So on that note, would your home kitchen pass that same test? One Valley woman said yes, so we put her kitchen to the test. This story begins with a simple question on Facebook. Do you think your home kitchen could pass a health department inspection? Six people responded. Two said no, four said yes. But Maddie Ezel's response was filled with so much confidence that we had to find out for ourselves. Marcus Fitzgerald, Madison County Health Department. Marcus Fitzgerald and Gloria Branch are food inspectors with the Madison County Health Department. They test kitchens every day for cleanliness and overall safety practices. So they didn't mind stopping by Mrs. Ezel's new market home to find out if her kitchen is all she believes it's cracked up to be. While she cooks breakfast, Marcus gets to work. And since you invited us in here, I'm going to really look and see what we can find in here. The test begins inside the refrigerator, and while he finds that it's neat and tidy and nothing's expired, he did find something else. That you don't want to store any raw animal products or eggs over anything ready to eat that won't require any heat treatment, such as the orange juice, and then I also see that we have the watermelon there. Because if someone cracks an egg, because an egg is a fragile product, and it leaks onto that watermelon, you're not going to heat treat it to destroy any of the pathogens that may come from those eggs, so that's going to increase your risk for illness. He also finds a little bit of buildup around the refrigerator gaskets and suggested she cleans that with a little water and bleach. She says she uses what many of us use, cleaning wipes, which is okay, but... These are only good for a certain amount of time. Once you've gotten them soiled, the concentration is it, it, not sanitizing anymore. After that reality check, Marcus continues to check every nook and cranny of Mrs. Ezel's kitchen. He likes the pantry. It's good, good. She even has her cleaning supplies stored in a nice proper location on the bottom shelf below the food. But the praises quickly come to an end when she prepares to use her wooden cutting board. There are breaks and cracks in your cutting board. And so for one, that would be those areas in there that were going to be hard to clean. And so that's going to increase your risk for potential contamination. So she quietly also, tucks it away. Breakfast is it. almost ready to be served, and that signals the beginning of yet another test, the test of food temperature. It looks good, smells good, but is it truly ready to eat? Oh, that's great. You want to at least cook it to 165 degrees. This is an egg-based product. After all of her breakfast items have been tested for proper temperature, it's time for the results. She has several infractions, and points have been deducted. So can Mrs. Ezel's Mr. kitchen Green. really pass a health inspection mm -hmm. test? What's her score? Mrs. Ezel, if we were to grade your establishment or your home today, you would have a 94. You keep a very clean home, and you're doing an immaculate job. Thank you very much. I knew I would get much better than a C. <laughs> and you did. <laughs> She's so modest. How safe is your kitchen? We've posted a test so you can take that on our website at WAFF.com and good luck. Your time, your time now 612. Is your mailbox usually filled with junk mail? What about your email inbox? If you feel as though you're being inundated with junk, you're right. But there are ways to clean out the clutter in your life. All it takes is a mailbox makeover. Opening a mailbox is like opening a gift each day, but instead of a nice surprise, Kiara Slater usually knows what she's going to get, and it's not a box of goodies. That's outrageous. She's talking and about a gift that never seems to run out, junk mail. This Alabama a and student receives her fair share of it, and she's not alone. The average American household receives about 18 pieces of junk mail each week. If you add that up, that's about 936 pieces per year, cluttering your box with things you may not be interested in. At first you're like, how do they know my address? Like, where did they come from? But you can't question the junk in one box without questioning the junk in another, your email inbox. The junk in my inbox is worse. Okay. It's way worse. The mail, it's, it's a fair amount. The inbox is ridiculous. You may not know this, but there are ways to get rid of or at least lessen the amount of junk in both. It's a mailbox makeover, and all you need is a computer and a little patience. I'm ready to get rid of it because I want it to be gone. Kiara and I headed to a spot to log on, and soon the elimination process began. All you have to do is log on to optoutprescreen.com. Okay. OptOutPreScreen.com is a website that allows you to opt out of pre-approved credit card offers for up to five years. 
It's operated by the four major credit rating companies. As you can see, it will ask for your name, address, social security number, and date of birth. However, the last two are not required. Then it will give you a few options. Kiara chose to opt out of receiving credit card offers for five years. After that, she typed in her personal information, pressed enter, and that was it. If I had known it was that easy, I would have, whoa, been did it. <laughs> so the next step in our mailbox makeover was to tackle the junk in her email inbox. There are 1,956 spam messages in my inbox. This is ridiculous. Some would say it's sick. That's why I headed to Computer ER in Huntsville for a remedy. Raymond Harrell is a PC repair technician and says there are things we can do to stop receiving so much junk in our email accounts. I have a couple different email accounts. You can have everything important on one email, and then you can have another more public email that you actually give out to multiple accounts, things that you don't care if you get a lot of junk email on. Harold says to never open email from someone you don't know, and he also suggests adding a spam filter to your computer. You have the ones that operate through the internet service providers, but it doesn't hurt to have an extra level of protection on your end. And it also helps keep out a lot of viruses by not opening those emails and by having that extra protection. Helpful tips to help people like Kiara declutter her inbox and her mailbox on the journey to making life a little less junky. But I didn't know it was that easy. It's easy. <laughs> It is easy. And for more information on how to bypass the junk, just log on to our website, WAFF.com, and click on this story. There's no doubt the Gallette family loves to travel. Carl and Donna, along with their two young children, have taken them to sites in so many places that it's hard for them to keep up with where they have and haven't been. Well, we haven't been to, I think, Seattle, Washington, those areas. Right. Right. You know, out west. Colorado. Yeah, Colorado. And well, I like been to Colorado. Colorado. Have we? You, you didn't go. No, okay. no, no, I didn't go. Over the years, they've traveled to destinations in at least 14 states. Their goal is to hit all 50. Of course, hotels become their home away from home, so when they're searching for a good one, it has to have all of the important amenities. Breakfast. Well, that's important. <laughs> it's really important. Breakfast. Uh, <laughs> Well, and, with a family of four, you know, yeah. it, it, it means a lot when you can include breakfast in there and, and not have to go out. But while breakfast and other perks are usually readily available online, mm -hmm. some information is not. I asked the Galettes if they've ever checked out who may be living in their temporary home away from home. We have not. Living as in? Residing mm -hmm. on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. No, not as far as... Um, that's that. a good question. Before you check in, you may want to check out the sex offender registry of the state you're heading to on vacation, particularly paying attention to the sex offender's current address. Now, while there are several websites being offered, we checked out homefacts.com. Let's say someone is heading to Athens for a visit. The cheap rates of town and country end look mighty attractive online. But type in the address, and you'll find this is home to five registered offenders. One offender had a victim who was a 10-year-old girl. I went to town and country end to see if the owner was aware of the sex offenders living there, and if so, does he tell other customers? Did you know about this? Yeah. What do you, uh, do you tell the customers as yeah. well? What do you tell them? We have the sex offender here. Mm -hmm. Is it required that the motel owner lets me know that this person is staying here? No, ma'am. Do you think it should be? Uh, if you were there with children, I would think so, yes, ma'am. Mike Gunter is an investigator with the Limestone County Sheriff's Department. He keeps track of the 150 sex offenders living within that community and says as long as the motel is at least 2,000 feet away from a school or child care facility, it is in compliance with the law. It's usually these pay by the week or pay by the month motels. They become known within the, I guess you, would, you could say, sex offender circle, and uh, they'll, they'll start frequenting these lo locations. Hundreds of sex offenders in Alabama are released each year, so we discovered quite a few locations near popular family destinations. In Huntsville, we found two offenders living at America's Best Ends and one at Country Hearth Inn in Madison, both just minutes away from the Space and Rocket Center. The Knights Inn in Birmingham looks fairly decent online, and it's just four minutes away from the Civil Rights Institute. But if you check the address, 
Two offenders live here. One lives at the Coliseum Motel in Montgomery, just five minutes from Mizzou. We found another at Express Inn East, just a stone's throw away from the Montgomery Museum. This offender abused a six-year-old girl and a 13-year-old boy. Wow. Really? That's interesting. The Gallet hmm. family just returned from Las Vegas and is already planning other trips in the near future. However, their planning will now include more than just checking out a hotel's amenities. Along with checking the price and checking how the hotel looks and checking for free breakfast, then <laughs> I'm going to be checking for criminal checks as well. So <laughs> that's going to be one of my to-do lists.